Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. This week we're going to start a little bit of a, a new series we're going to talk about that is going to be called Operations 101. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce you to new concepts to help make your operations and running your trains a little bit more realistic and add a little bit more fun. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this first episode of Operations 101, we're going to introduce you to a little bit of a small concept called momentum. So in the real world, a locomotive is really very, very heavy, big piece of machinery. Um, in the case of a diesel locomotive, as we see here in front of us, there's a lot of metal. You've got a heavy cast iron block. You've got thousands of gallons of fuel hidden below on the fuel tank. And there's a lot of machinery going on. But what happens is in our models, because the motor is directly geared to the wheels, without any momentum, we get instant starts and stops. Now, instant starts and stops. I've got my Pittsburgh Lake Erie here. I'm going to go ahead and run it. This has zero momentum at the moment. We're going to start in the forward direction. So we're going to start moving. You can see it instantly runs up to a very fast speed and then comes to a stop fairly instantly. Same thing when we go in reverse. You see a very quick lurch of speed and then a quick stop. Now, in the real world, to gain that amount of speed, it would take a lot more space than what we have here. Now, part of the reason is, is because on a diesel locomotive, for example, in the real world, we have a diesel engine that's generating electricity attached to what's called the main generator. And that main generator sends electrical power to the motors to turn the wheels on the motor on the trucks themselves. But because of this non-direct drive, it takes a little bit more time to start and stop the locomotive. So as we can see here out of the package, we have zero momentum. Now in our blue NAMI, we can go ahead and set this up. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the blue NAMI for example, but anything that you're that I'm going to do here, you can do with either the Tsunami 2 or the Economy as well. You just would use the DCC system to set the CVs appropriately. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the blue NAMI app. So we're going to go to uh, speed settings here. We're going to go to our speed settings here at the top and you can see our acceleration. We're simply going to dial this up and remember, we don't need to do a whole lot of momentum. We can add just a little bit just to give a little bit more of a realistic start and stop rather than an instant start and stop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this for well, those are I'm going to have an acceleration here of about 51. Um, and deceleration of 75. So now when I come back to my locomotive, you can see that when I throttle up, you can see that it takes a little bit more time for it to accelerate. And then of course, coming to a stop, you can see that it doesn't stop instantly, but it also gives time for that diesel engine sound to rev up and notch down to idle as we start and stop our locomotives. Same thing. So listen to it closely this time when I accelerate. You can hear that diesel engine get a little bit louder as it's working to gain speed. Now when I cut the throttle, you can hear that prime mover get a little quieter as it slowly starts dropping down to a nice smooth idle. So this is just one example of how the momentum can help make your running your trains a little bit more realistic and fun. Now, what I encourage you to do is actually go through when you're operating your locomotives and experiment. Play with different values. Now, in the Tsunami 2 and the Economy, your acceleration rate is set in CB3, and it's a value from 1 to 255, or 0 disabled. And then deceleration is stored in CV4, again, zero disabled or one through 255. Now on my personal locomotives, I have a pretty high acceleration and deceleration rate. So my acceleration rate is actually closer to 100 and my deceleration is actually about 200. And the reason is because I use our functional braking that we can talk about in next edition of Operations 101. But what you want to do is you want to find your momentum settings, what you like to see and how you like to see it. Um, a lot of people don't like to add a lot of momentum. Great. Use a little bit. If you like a lot of momentum and you want to implement the brakes, first off, you can see some of our videos that we've done in the past about brakes, but we're also going to talk about that in the next episode. So guys, be sure to check out the user's guide where it talks about this and all the other cool features that we've built into our 
family of decoders, whether it be an Ekonami, Tsunami 2, or now the Blue Nami. And so that's all I've got for this episode. We'll see you guys next time. But be sure to like this content if you like to see more operations videos where we'll talk about real railroading and how it's reproduced on the Tsunami 2 and Blue Namis. And also be sure to subscribe to our channel so whenever we post content, you're notified. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.